bitch, I'm in the... Bitch, I'm in the... Welcome to the show, everybody. My name is Brian. With me always is that guy right there. Do you remember? I'm Mark. Oh, I am. I, fuck you, man. Come on. I, Listen. I'm it was one time, and I even fixed it while the intro was I, playing for Facebook. I it, love it this intro. Again. I love this intro. I, this intro is I fantastic. Like, I, thank you. I enjoy making, uh, and I'm liking making them now. Um, our show is actually brought to you by Yancey Street's uh, Yag. Okay, I said it too fast, so sue me. Slow down. Yancey Street Comics. They're in Newport, Ritchie, Florida. Uh, we have their uh, website and stuff. We'll go across the screen as we uh, um, our show goes. And um, if you have any, if you want any comics or anything, give them a call. Go down there. You know, they're on Facebook. Come to Florida and visit us too. At the same time, you're gonna. You're going to go get some comic books anyway down in Port Ritchie. You're just going to drive right past my house. Well, you could be like Bryce Tucker, you know, ride past our house anyways, going to see, uh, you know, the Royal Rumble. So that's that's why we're not friends. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, Brian, would you like to tell our fans, our followers, our mom, dad, uh, family, brother, friends, sister? Yeah. Yeah. Who we have on our show today. Absolutely, man. Uh, this is somebody that you've been uh, diehard about. Like, hey, listen, I, I want to get more um, people like her on the show. And this, I is... wanted, I wanted, I wanted more from that genre, anyways. Because the genre, know, the I, horror. Yeah. Well, not only just horror, but for the fact that you know, I've had a shit ton from Friday the Thirteenth. It's yep, time yep. to start branching out from that part too. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is Halloween is like second on the list. Stop so, it. Uh, actually, Halloween was actually my first favorite uh, movie growing up. Uh, Friday the 13th was uh, second, and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street was um, at my very bottom. It's because you spent a lot of time reading um, Playboy, and you probably no, saw I this young lady. No, no. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know. My God. All right. Anyway. So we we have. From Halloween, the very first Halloween, Miss Sandy Johnson, who played Judith Myers. Judith was Michael's Michael Myers, Otis sister, and the reason why he it, it, his very first kill. And um, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk to her about all of it. So let's bring her on, Mark. Hey, hi everybody. Hey, Miss Sandy, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. That's good. Sorry for the long windedness of of that. And <laughs> every so often, we just like, we like to banter back and forth. It's fun. Uh, it is true though that you were in uh, in a Playboy, correct? Uh, because I know Mark has has a couple of copies of floating. Uh, no, I I checked my copies <laughs> to see if I had her, and I guess I I must have got rid of that one on accident. I was trying to keep all the right ones, but that's besides the point. Yes, that is true. Uh, June 1974. I told you. I know Fantastic. the date. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, well, let, let's uh, let's introduce everybody to you, uh, Miss Sandy Johnson. Didn't where we are already you from? That? Where are you from? And what's going on in your life? Uh, I am originally from San Antonio, Texas. I currently reside in Fort Worth, Texas. And what's going on? Yeah. Well, let's see. We're building a new house, so we're about to close and have a humongous move, which is rather stressful. <laughs> and then I, um, let's see, I have a couple, I have three cons coming up. Only one really can I announce yet, and that one is in North Carolina at the Myers House, North Carolina, which you've, if you've never seen it or been there, it is a very cool place. Hold on, wait a minute. There his house is in North. I thought it was in California. It is. The North Carolina is a exact copy of the outside made with the actual blueprints. And a guy named uh, Kenny has it, had it built. 
and he does special events there. He's got a huge screen out in front of it, so he shows movies. He does, uh, I think, Onset Cinema, uh, Cinema is the name of his uh, company, and he goes around to original locations, invites people to go there with him, and then he shows the original film that goes with the location. And he travels all over and does this. That's but cool. when I go to the Myers Health, North Carolina, I get to stay in Judith's room. <laughs> <laughs> a little scary there. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's fun. So yeah, that's what's going on. I have um, some films coming up. I'm going to be shooting some here in the next few months. So that's awesome. I shot that's my nice. first one uh, in person. I, I've shot some, you know, uh, online but my first one was um in florida and um the executioner is the name of it and i have a very nice role as a psychiatrist and i think it's going to be a good one yeah i seen that when i was looking through your films because i was going to sit there and try to watch some of them but you know some of them they don't have online anymore so no. i couldn't watch so i i had to go still get um a gas pump girls i think and probably hot and actually those are the two best ones those are my favorites you're and not a fan of the monty python ones that i'm not actually in a monty python movie and how, how they... did that how did that get how did that get into your uh, imdb is, in your imdb yeah I have no idea um, unless they put me in the film and I didn't know. <laughs> well, I mean, they could have uh, easily put the Playboy issue in it. You know, you never know. Yeah. I mean, maybe there's something in there. I should probably go watch it because I really like Monty Python um, yeah. and I'd be happy if I was in there. But as far as I know, I'm not. No, see. Learn something new. Yeah. <laughs> Learn something new today. Uh, what, uh, so in the meantime, while you're closing on your house and, and doing all that, uh, what do you do for fun when you're not filming, when you're not, <laughs> what are you doing for yourself for fun? Um, well, I, I do like to garden and walk and I love to travel. So we've done quite a bit of that. I love crafts. I love to make jewelry and, you know, things like that. I love to sew. And I love animals. So all of those things, uh, and my friends, of course, all of those things uh, bring me just happiness. Well, she's got a f right. I, I got a few things in common with her. You know, I got a shit ton of animals. I love and animals. And he sews. No, no. I like, <laughs> some, I like some of my friends. <laughs> Brian, well, that's a different story. <laughs> Wait, we're calling each other friends now? Yeah, we're more like friend, uh, family. Exactly. Known each other. We've we've known each other long enough. This is true. Do you have anybody like like Mark in your life? Do you have a a friend, a super close friend that you consider your family? Somebody that you kind of grew up with? Absolutely, my best friend that lives in Georgia. We have been best friends since we were probably thirteen. Oh wow! Yes. That's so, about the that's about the age that we were when we met. Yeah, yeah. But we won't tell that story. We've told it enough. Well, well <laughs> th is she still is your best friend still in Georgia? She is. I mean, we met in California. I lived in law a long time in California uh, with my dad, and um, that's where we met. We met in middle school, and both in drama. And became very good friends, and we have stayed uh, just best friends for all these years. That's cool. What's her yep. name? Her name is Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And I call is her she... Lizard. <laughs> 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 or Lizzie, or Tinkerbell. I have a whole bunch of names for her. <laughs> well, I hope she's. I hope she's watching. I hope she's watching, or at I, least hears this later because I'm sure that she'd love that shout out that you gave her there. Yeah. I can tell you I can tell you some of the nicknames I have for Brian, but they're not nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's uh same. <laughs> <laughs> uh 
let, let me ask you uh, what. Um, so I, I did a little reading and a little research. You don't know how to read. OK, I had Mark read for me uh, when I was going to sleep last night and he was <laughs> no, I'm just, uh, so I, I, I heard and I don't know how true this is, but the blood that was used in the very first Halloween movie. Um, there was some problems with it. It was very sticky. It was hard to get off of your skin, your your hair, or whatever. Is that is that accurate? And what did they do? How did they <laughs> alleviate you of? Well, um, it wasn't so much that there was anything wrong with the blood. It was hard to get off, and whoever they had scrubbing it off of me was kind of rough. So that was my problem with the situation: is that they weren't being as gentle as they needed to be, considering the part of my body they were scrubbing. <laughs> Understood. Understood. And then uh, you had somebody help you with that portion. Is that right? Uh, the person that was cleaning the blood off of you uh, was a little harsh. So somebody stepped in and, and helped you out. Right. That would have been Jamie Lee. And and that's cool. Uh, like, yeah. uh, so she understood because I'm sure that I don't know. Did Jamie Lee ever get any of, the, any of that blood on her? So she knew, she, like, hey, this is what they probably used the same blood at, at at the end of the movie that they did in the beginning. So <laughs> she probably knows. And something that Sandy will probably tell you is her scene was done last. Uh, oh, so it went back. The film went backwards. Uh, they don't shoot it all in order. Right. They shoot there, it all in different parts. There was actually a reason why. The first scene, which was mine, was actually filmed last, and it had to do with the Myers house. When they first found it as a location, it was in really bad condition. So they um, had to fix it all up for um, the scenes and stuff, and then uh, to make it, sorry, it was all dilapidated, so they had to shoot those scenes first. Sorry, I got it backwards. So when it was all dilapidated is when it's later in the film and it's been 18 years or whatever, and Michael comes back and it's really run down and creepy and all that. That's actually the way it looked in the beginning. Okay. So they shot all those scenes uh, with it like that when the kids are coming up to it and everything. And then whenever I was in it, they needed it to look nice. So now they needed to fix it up. So they used it first as it was, and then they fixed it up to make it look like a family lived there. So that's why they did my scene last. Was that house actually owned by someone, or was that something that they found and then uh, purchased or rented? Do you know? Um, you know, I, I, I'm I, not sure about that. If it was um, just something they rented, it was empty. So it might have just, you know, been a rental property or something and in between. Were you scared at any point on the set? <laughs> Absolutely. When I was upstairs, it was a very old house and it definitely creaked and stuff like an old house. And I could hear them coming <laughs> to get me. I could hear them coming up the stairs and they were like creaking and stuff. And I could tell. Um, that they were getting closer and closer and closer to me. So that was very creepy, uh, <laughs> knowing that I'm about, you know, to come face to face with a knife and stuff. So, yeah, that, that part was actually pretty scary. That's the whole scene where it's behind the mask. Right. Uh, yeah. it, it, did they hold a mask up to the camera to film that? Um, what was that? I mean, um, just getting the, the eyes having yeah, that. Yeah, that was actually done later. They okay. they didn't pick up the mask, but the actual filming, I actually saw the original footage for the first time um, in the raw form about oh, four or five months ago when I was in uh, Florida shooting that film. The, the guy that bought that piece of film was there. And he put it up on the TV for me to see. And it was amazing. It showed the whole room. It showed the full 
stabbing me, falling, the whole thing, not just, you know, through the eye holes. So that was like the first time in all these years that I actually got to see the actual footage. So it was incredibly cool. That'd be cool to see. Yeah, it was it was amazing. He's having trouble, I get, getting licensing to share it. He owns it, but he can't. He's not allowed to share it yet. He owns it, but he has to get the, uh, yeah, people that own the rights to Halloween. It's uh, right. The right. Family but he did something. show it to me. And so, yeah, there was no mask. <laughs> you can see the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, it was it was actually pretty cool to see that. So with Michael Myers, let, let's say Judith is. Do you say she was the reason that Michael became the way that he became? Is that the way the story is supposed to play out, or do you feel that it was already in inside of him? Yeah, I always just kind of thought as Michael as a bad seed. If you're familiar with that book, just kind of. Um, bad news from birth, just something genetic went wrong in the process. Oh, oh, hold on, uh, Sandy, one second. Brian, read the book. Yes. Read the book. It tells you everything that you need to know. You're going to come <laughs> over and read me the book when I go to sleep tonight, right? <laughs> no, I'm waiting for the book to get here. I gotta it's, wait actually, next one. it's actually a kid's book. Really? Uh, called The Bad Seed, and it's about a kid that's Basically, was a bad seed, but um, anyway, that's where the term I think comes from was from that from that book. But I think that's pretty much it. He was just something was wrong th- from the beginning. Sure. And I don't know that anything could have changed it one way or the other. No, you, you just happened to be the one that pissed him off that night. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> you found the boiling point for him. I, I did. It, I think it was the way you said his name in the film. No, she had her yeah. boyfriend over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was fooling around instead of watching over him. So my bad for sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you watched any of the other Halloween movies? I have. I have watched them all with the exception of Rob Zombie. I, um, everyone, I have a couple people that are like my, um, meter for gore <laughs> my gore meters <laughs> and uh, they told me that uh, it's, it's that way might, gory yeah that that might not be the best choice for me so i haven't no, I seen was... that and i haven't seen um saw what? oh come on saw is awesome but again yes everybody has their <laughs> own you know i can watch <laughs> horror movies saw movies uh you know, I watched Rob Zombie's movies. I liked the first one, uh, first Halloween that he did, the second one. Um, but I like some more of his movies too. But it just depends on how much you like in gore. But I mean, it'd be different if it was like um, Faces of Fear back in the eighties. You know, I, I I didn't like those movies. Right. And I was also a kid with those, and you know, they showed weird stuff. Um, I like um. I like psychological horror uh, more than than, uh, just blood and stuff. They really don't have to have any blood to scare the hell out of me. (laughs) (laughs) You just need that twist. You need to know like what's going on. You're you're trying to get into that person's head and like yeah, and you're thinking something else is going on, and that's not at all. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I like the best. Uh, I just watched uh, uh, Thanksgiving. I I just watched that last night. Yeah, I liked it myself. I don't know, it was, but it, was it, okay. it, it had a good twist to it. You know, you didn't think that the sheriff was going to, never mind. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alert. Way to ruin stuff for people, Mark. I didn't, say, I, I didn't say anything on what the, what the sheriff did. You might as well tell us how Halloween ends. <laughs> Which one? Which one? We going with the new version or the old version, you know? Uh, Miss Andy, if they if they could bring you back as your character, because let's say it was all a dream and Michael didn't kill you, where do then you we think wouldn't have, we wouldn't? Where have do you Halloween. think? No, 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 no. <laughs> you still would because once again we're going into that psychological portion of it where, right. you know what I'm saying. So where do you think 
uh, Judith Myers would fall in that kind of aspect. If, if, if it was, if it was just a wake up and bam, the hell, why was I dreaming that? Why did my brother kill me? That kind of thing. The, the way that I've always thought about it is if I was going to have a sequel, I would um, have not died. He would have attacked me, but I wouldn't have died. And they would have put me um, in some safe place. He wouldn't know in the, initially that I didn't die. And they actually took me and took me somewhere else for, for safekeeping. And that is where I would go ahead and grow up and everything. Always terrified that Michael would escape or whatever, or figure out that I wasn't dead. So to me, it would have been that whole scenario of Michael looking for me because he thinks maybe I'm still alive. Well, there's a, the reason I asked that question, there's a lot of fan films that focus around um, Get Friday the 13th and, and Michael Myers and that kind of stuff. So, you know, just giving someone a little detail of like, hey, from this perspective, where do you go? You know, so that's that was my thought process. Like, hey, what if this never really happened and, and she wakes up and she's like, I swear to God, my brother stabbed me. And like, you're, you're, you know yeah, what I mean? But see, I like her, I like her uh, point better. It would have been better if he did attack her, but then we wouldn't have uh, had a uh, Lori, which, okay. I could see it going a different route instead. Um, I think it would be, it could be a different way of looking at it. Sure. Or we could still have Lori. The, the franchise could be exactly the same, except for the fact that, He's He's still looking for you. Uh, the sister didn't actually die, and at some point he realizes that. Well, uh, I mean, according to, you know, part two, well, it depends on which part two you look at, you know, Lori was your sister too. So, I mean, right. and that's why I say it depends on which which part you're looking at, you know, because 2018, I liked how they, they you know, rectified that. You know, that was just a lie that people made up, you know, right. but, then it, but then, you know, they went and destroyed, you know, the, the way that they ended it off. It was allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly whatever, Stephen, he's going to give me shit because last night I gave him shit on, um, <laughs> on a different podcast. Uh, so who wins the fight? I got to ask this one. Who wins the fight? Because I, I watch a couple of TikTok videos. I don't know if you've ever seen them or not, but Jason versus Freddy versus Michael Myers. Who wins that battle? Ooh. Wow. Well, um, that's a tough one because one is in dreams, which is hard to kill. But Michael is kind of supernatural we we can't he just seems to survive everything no matter what so does jason so though i'm thinking maybe michael just because he has some sort of supernatural thing that i mean he should have died so many times and so many times there he is again <laughs> i'm still trying to figure out how come nobody shot him in the head you know he's not a zombie he he's been shot everywhere else but not the freaking head we're going to put uh, you in the movie, Mark, and we're going to let, let you go shoot him in the head and see if that stops him. They need a sniper. Oh yeah. I say, you know, here's the thing. Like, so watching some of these films and, and when the man gets in between a rock and a hard place, basically, and he's not dead, that's a big problem. And then they're going to say, uh, what was it? Uh, she She goes back. To look for him, Jamie goes back to look for him, and it's not him or something. Is that he's what not what? there? He was not there. there, right? Not there. That's why in uh 2018 they did that same thing with her falling out the window, landing on the ground. When he went to go look to see where she was at, she wasn't there. So they they were doing a little reverse, dude. Uh, sorry, Glick, I, I'm Jason sorry. says. <laughs> or he says Jason gets the win. Okay, I'm gonna say 
Uh, guys, I, I, quite honestly, it's Freddy Krueger because you're never going to pull him out of a dream and, and try bullshit. to kill him. I, bullshit. I'm sorry. You're bullshit. just not going to do it. I call bullshit. <laughs> I call bullshit. Well, Freddy, well, Freddy has, we'll discuss that. Every, every movie he has been brought out of the dreams. Every Supposedly. Movie. No. I, I got your back, Jarvis. <laughs> Supposedly. Yeah. Uh. All right, so let's move on to a different to a different movie. Tell us a, about some of the other films that you were in and uh, the roles you played there and stuff because it's a completely different thing. You're you're in a horror genre when when you was that the first one? Was that where you got your first where you got your start? Uh, that was my first horror movie, okay. but it was not my first film. I um, I did a 3D film called Surfer Girl. I then I did um, either Hots or Gas Pump Girls. They were real close together. In uh -huh. Hots, I play a sorority girl. In uh, I'm in the Pie Group, and we are not very nice. We are the wealthier, prettier girls, and we're kind of mean to the other sororities. So. Um, and my personality in that, I'm not very nice. And uh, it is a comedy, and I, I get it a couple times. I get, like, uh, dishwasher suds poured on my head, and <laughs> different things happen to me. But Hots is actually kind of a fun film. It was a lot of fun to film. And, uh, yeah, I just played the kind of the, in the mean you know, nasty girls. And then the other one, Gas Pump Girls, I play um, the girlfriend of uh, Kirsten Baker from Holly, uh, from uh, Friday the 13th, five, I think. Uh, she is uh, the star of it. And her uncle owns a gas station, an old gas station. He has a heart attack and goes into the hospital, but she wants to save his gas station. She doesn't want to, to go under, but right across the street from her gas station is a brand new super duper gas station. 7-Eleven. So huh? 7-Eleven. So yeah. So they're stealing all the business. And so she gets her girlfriends to come in and dress sexy and to wait on the cars pump the gas and do the, you know, all that stuff. So that's the story is us trying to save the gas station by bringing in the guys and getting them not to go across the street. Again, it's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, I mean, it's, um, there's a lot of people that have actually seen it because they commented on me. I've had people bring me posters, original posters and things from it. And you stand, you can still get it. I have, when I go to shows, sometimes I take um, both of them with me uh, to sell. But yeah, so they were both fun. In Gas Pump Girls, I am a nice girl trying to help my friend, just having a good time flirting. <laughs> doing all of those things yep very cool all right so we're gonna check that one out i have i have to check that one out you've seen that one mark i've seen it it was um a few years back i seen it because you know i get bored and try to find you know movies that in the 80s because or 70s 80s because they have not always the best dial you know the best script but the way that they go about stuff is totally different than now. Oh, dude, they made they made better movies back then. I think if they would have had uh, you know better CGI and and uh, boom mics and stuff like that, I think everything would have been much different than you know. I mean, uh, I, I'm I'm still one that watches. You know, I'll I'll sit there. You know, at least once a year, I'll sit there and watch Porky's. I'll watch. You know, yeah, just stuff like that because I like them because not the best acting always, but you know, but. Some of them were, that's their first film and stuff like that. But sure. I, you know, it's always great to watch movies like that because they had better plots than some of the movies that they have now. And you couldn't, you can't make most of those anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. We were talking about that. 
We were talking about that, the, the movies that don't age well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of vulgarity that you can't bring to the screen today because people are going to be like, oh, that's racist or nope, can't say that. Mm -mm. Politi right. Politically incorrect. Absolutely. So, so that's why we go back and watch. That's why I go back and watch stuff like that. Like I'm like we were talking earlier. I'm a, I, I really enjoy Monty Python stuff. You know, oh, a absolutely. lot of a lot of the people that I work with, they don't understand it. I'll I'll walk around quoting some of that stuff, and I'm like, eh. you know, and some of Mel yeah. Brooks's movies when we did them. Um, yeah. I didn't I didn't watch in, barely any of them when I was growing up, but I watched them, and I was like, wow, they're treasures for sure. Yeah, stuff yeah, that we, couldn't be uh, stuff that definitely could not be made nowadays. Yeah, we had a Mel Brooks day, and we just kind of uh, a couple of us just picked a couple of movies, and we were like, "This is one you got to watch. This is why you got to watch it." And then, if you made it today, does it age well? A Blazing lot of Saddles. a lot a lot of his stuff doesn't age well. Blazing Saddles alone could not be made today. <laughs> It's true. it's true so true so the one thing that we have not asked you yet is how and why did you get into acting uh, well i in school of course you have choices for electives mm -hmm. and i wasn't really a big sports person but i did love the arts so I thought about all the different ones I could do. And I just thought, you know, I think I, I'll try um, drama and acting. And I started that in middle school and uh, I played Alice in Wonderland and just had the best time. It got very good reviews. And I thought, Excellent. you know what, this is, this is fun. So I was doing both dance production, choreography and um, acting. And I just, I fell in love with it. So I went through middle school with it. I went into um, high school with it and into college and then started going to, uh, in Hollywood, you know, at the theaters, you can do, go to improv classes and all of that. So I started doing those. And then uh, most people know that when my, my dad got really sick um, with cancer and um, when he did, I, he needed money to go to Mexico. There was a, a treatment called Leotrell that they had some hope for, and he really wanted to try it, and he needed money, more money to do that. So someone said, well, why don't you um, try for Playboy? So that's what I did, and uh, I, I made it, and uh, I was able to uh, help him with that trip and everything. So. Uh, unfortunately, it did not help, and I and we lost him, but it was uh, worth a try. But um, after that, of course, being in in Playboy, it brought me a lot of other jobs, you know, commercials and lots of uh, uh, clothing and and foreign commercials and and you know print ads. So it really did jolt my career although that isn't <laughs> why i did it but that was the good part about it so um yeah so that kind of started in it and then the role started coming in and then of course the the big one <laughs> halloween yeah so and then i i uh i ended up getting married and moving to oregon and then getting a divorce and my whole life kind of went to hell so that's when i left Hollywood. And then whenever they wanted me for uh, to put my footage in 2018, my current agent had been looking for me for about eight years. He finally found me and um, and he said, you know, Blumhouse is wanting to put your footage in 2018, but they need your signature. So he got me in touch with Blumhouse and they ended up uh, getting permission to put me in that. And since then I had people say, well, why do you, you know, you should go back into acting and get on Facebook and stuff. So I thought, well, 
maybe <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs> hey, get, so. Listen, you, you've had a you've had a fruitful career, and why you know? I don't know. If it were me, I'd probably be like, "Yeah, uh, I'm here in case somebody wants to put me in a part or something." I'm, Mark's over here still waiting to die, so. He's like, no, uh, no, yeah, I just no, want to be on, in a, wait, wait, I just want to be in a film so I can be a dead person. I'm like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not waiting to die. I'm waiting for somebody to kill me on screen. There you That's go. That's a different story. There you go. He's uh he's got a, a very, very uh, wide range of being able to die. <laughs> no, I'm, wait, Sorry. I'm only so, I'm only so, so tall. So you can only do so much. <laughs> Um, if, if, uh, if you were contacted, if you were, if somebody reached out to you from one of these fan films and said, Hey, we're, um, uh, we're doing a fan film and we're going to do a story of, you know, I don't know, the Myers prior to Michael being born or something like that. Uh, would that be something that you would say, Hey, you know, I'm in, I'm game. I'll try it out. Or, or in any aspect, would would there be any kind of breaking point where you're like, no, I don't want to do it that way? Right. Um, a lot of it has to do with my agent. Uh, he tries to steer me clear of any lawsuits or anything that would be a problem with uh, the owners <laughs> of Halloween. Okay. So okay. I have to be careful not to do anything that would be an infringement. Okay. I that. That. Why is why is Friday the thirteenth so big then in the in the fan Why? Festival? Because uh, because it was tied up in a lawsuit for so long that they're not making money off of it. You know, it, there's a difference okay. on the fan films don't make money off of it. They they ask for help. You know, they're, they're asking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, do the um, campaigns and stuff, but sure. most of them want to make. The Friday the Thirteenth film that they think is out there, Halloween doesn't have a you know they have the right people doing the movies. You know we went over ten years or more. Stephen, you'll tell me. Um, I think it was ten years, twelve years, something like that, without a movie. So everybody wanted something to do with it. Now Michael Myers, he it's like him. You know he goes away for a little while and then he'll come back. Uh, um, but Jason went away and we haven't seen him. Yeah, you know, big difference. Okay, it's like soon you're going to see people making uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies because we haven't had one, a good one, in a long time. People are doing it already, I'm sure. Well, they have Dylan's Nightmare, and which is good. It's a, a continuation of the uh, the new Nightmare, uh, not. You know, uh, as long as it's not infringing, I think on on no, the, they yeah, got permission. So, they got permission yeah. and all that. Um, and that's what she was saying too, right? And uh, there hasn't been, like I said, there hasn't been a whole lot of movies for Halloween, uh, for fan films. Uh, not that I've seen. I've seen a couple, and I don't care for. Them. Uh, are you? Do you? So you just got back on social media? Is that right? Or you're uh, just I getting onto on social about? Three years now, I guess I was actually at Texas Frightmare, and one of the fans said to me, "You know, you really should get on social media because I hate not being able to communicate with you until the next convention." So I thought about it, and uh, I actually found someone who knew how to set it up to make it more secure than just a regular one, and so that's. That's when I did it. I started with just a, a Facebook. And then when I had enough fans, I got a, a, a fan page and then Instagram. So now I have all three. <laughs> okay. And that's it's a how, ton of fun. I love it. That's how I got a hold of her is on Facebook. I wrote her and she wrote back like, I think a day later or not even that. And, um, uh, and then she asked, uh, you know, if she could see a clip of it. So that's when I sent her CJ Graham's. Uh, um, CJ, interview. CJ was super awesome to have on the show too. You guys are all like, you know, when Mark was like, "Hey, I want to get more people from the horror genre because that's where I like 
you know, he likes to have. They're nicer. They're you, nicer. you guys are. I listen. I get it. I get it. Uh, so, have you watched any stuff on TikTok or Facebook Reels? No, I don't do TikTok. Um, okay. I don't. I, want, I, I just want to I don't show want to you. Political, so. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. I just wanted to show you. Uh, there is a there is a gentleman. Uh, his name is Evan. They're out of Decatur. Oh, uh, Michael Myers of Decatur. He's the Michael Myers of Decatur, and the videos that the family not, puts on is absolutely he, fantastic. He's so. got his son doing it now. It's fun. Oh, cool. uh, so yeah, he's he's got a little Michael Myers, and then he has uh this is uh let me just pull this up. Pull this bada bing. Make sure we got some audio here. Uh oh. There you go. This is too much, Evan. Seriously, I am <laughs> I'm trying to be calm and collected this Halloween, but you're taking it too far with your little jokes, okay? I'm tired of this. People, people walk this trail, and they're not going to appreciate it. I'm serious. Where's the baby? You said you were going to watch Harrison for me tonight so I could do some errands. Harrison, no, <laughs> you come here. Stop. <laughs> get the knife out of your eye. Come on, get in the truck. You're done. That's hilarious. Just, just something because you know these guys. Like when I saw that, I was like, I, I fell on the floor. I was laughing so hard. I was like, dang it, man, this is funny. Uh, oh, I, I love watching their shit. I love it when he got it, when the cops stop him and he he won't talk. He won't change his character. Nothing. And yep. she looks she comes out of the house and says, what did he do this? And he goes, damn it, Evan. What did you do? And yeah, what'd you do this time? Her, yeah. And just looks at her and the cops are telling him, put the knife down, put the knife down. And I know it's all, a, you know, a ploy and stuff like that. But, you know, they get calls on him a lot. Uh, when you guys were on set for that, was there a lot of joking and, and playing around and stuff? Or was there any other movies that you were on scene or on the set for where you guys were able to goof off and do do silly stuff like that? Um, Hall Halloween really wasn't one of those. It was a super busy set with um, very few people doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> it was very low budget. So there was there really wasn't it was it was uh, pretty pretty tight scheduling with you know practicing and and staging and you know all of that we were using the brand new camera system and so not so much on um, hots and uh, gas pump girls absolutely <laughs> we had a great time there was at at the gas station there was music playing because you know we were dancing and trying to get the guys to come in so even when we weren't filming we were still dancing and having a good time now brian has a, a had a question but i'm going to ask it since he you know asked a lot of my questions as it was all right he wants to know yeah this first question out of his mouth was um to me was did she meet hugh hefner I did many times, actually. Uh, as a playmate, I could go to the mansion pretty much any time I wanted to and bring my girlfriends. So we would go up and you could order anything you wanted to eat, day or night. You could swim. He had all kinds of video games and, you know, that kind of stuff. He had a zoo that was uh, on property. And, of course, I love animals. So we would go out and walk through the zoo and visit with the animals. They always had parties and volleyball and Easter egg hunts. Just, it was just a fun place. They had a big, um, uh, like a plant nursery where you could just, it was just beautiful. So for me, uh, coming from a low to middle-class family, my dad did better later on, but 
when my formative years, we, we really didn't have a lot of money or a lot of things. So been able to go somewhere and order anything you want to eat, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and swim in this beautiful pool and, you know, just walk over to the zoo was pretty amazing to me. Tell so, them your yeah. friends, let's go to the mansion. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I did meet him uh, many times at the mansion because um, he, you know, he had a big theater in there. You could go in and watch movies and and he, he was uh, generally there somewhere. And, and from what I've heard, and I don't know how true it is, but I've heard he was, he was super down to earth. He was always very cordial and very friendly with everyone. Not just the women, but the men as well. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, he had a lot of male friends that were there. He was always um, nice to me. I never saw him not be nice to anyone. Uh, yeah. And he, you know, he was, yeah, he was nice. You know, when he was sitting in there watching the movies or whatever, he was just like anybody else, you know, passing the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Mark, are you frozen? Oh, you, you were frozen there for a second there, buddy. I had to look at the, I had to look at the animals to see what they were doing. What was your next question? Oh, that was the question. I, I just wanted to just. Oh, my goodness. You said you had a few questions. I don't remember saying a few. I said, this I, guy. I, I, but yeah, kiss my ass, Brian. Anyway. Uh, books. Are you, are you doing, are you working on any books or anything like that? Any literature or anything like that? Is that something that drives you as well? Um, writing books. Yeah. Um, I am not, but one day I would like to write one. I had, um, a lot of things happen in my life, uh, with, you know, my dad's sickness, my mother was, um, mentally ill for a long time. And I lived with her through a lot of that. So there's a lot of things in my life growing up that I think would make an interesting story so maybe one of these days when i have time put it out there oh i'd buy it i i may have to wait <laughs> until i have some family members that aren't here anymore <laughs> oh just uh, just put it together listen to, hey uh don't buy my book uh <laughs> you're not allowed to read it and right. if anybody tells you that you should read it you shouldn't that's what you tell or, your family. I'll just give them a different name and maybe they won't recognize themselves. <laughs> yeah, you could you gotta totally write it under a pseudonym. So you know. Yeah, I, I think there's some things of interest uh, that people would find interesting for sure. You said something earlier. You said you were married once before. How old were you when you first got married? I was twenty-six. First time I got married. 26. How long, how many years did that last? I was married five, I think. I was married five years. Okay. And then now you're married to, was that the only other marriage that you had besides the one you're in now? Is that right? Yes. Okay. And this one, I've been married almost 40 years. 40 years? She's got Four her That's not a marriage. That's a life sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at uh, Mark and I, I think, are working with our wives on 20. I'm, I'm going on, seven? Yeah, I think you're going on 27. I'm, I've been with my wife for 26 years. We've been married this April, will be 24. Nice. That's so awesome. I, I, I'm hoping I can hit 40. I got to live long enough. She doesn't kill me first. I think Brian met his wife and married her in two weeks later. It wasn't two weeks. I, I <laughs> okay, met, three. A month. I, I think I met my wife. We dated for, it was weird, dude. We only dated for about six, seven months. And then I was like, I really like you a lot. Like, you take care of me. You, you know, do things for me that I didn't, wouldn't expect any other woman to do for me. So I was like, do you want to get married? And she was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. She probably Spoke regrets. too soon. Damn it. She, she does. Regrets. She regrets it. My wife regrets <laughs> it some days, too. But, you know. Uh, she's, she says that I have a hearing problem. And I keep saying, what? 
my wife says I have a listening problem, a listening problem, a hearing problem, um, a talking problem, um, you know, all different types of problems. But you're just ate up a problem, son. Yeah. <laughs> she married me, so she stuck with me. All right. So this new movie um, that you're in, uh, the, the Executioner, uh, mm -hmm. that is the, that's a 2024 film. Yes. We, is that, a, is, uh, we is that out started, now? It started filming in late 2023. Okay. And it is currently filming in and around Daytona Beach, which is where I went to do my scenes. And they did my scenes first because I was doing a uh, convention in Florida. So they could split the airfare and stuff with the convention. So they did mine first and it was amazing. Like I said, it was my first time on a set in, I don't know, 40 years or something. And um, it was very cool. And it was a great role. I mean, I loved it as a psychiatrist trying to help a young man who is very disturbed. And uh, yeah, it's a great role. I'm excited about it. I've seen some of the footage. Very nice. So I think it's going to be a good one. Who else? Who else have, uh, that we may know is in that uh, is going to be in that film? Oh gosh, um, I'm terrible with names. One it's of okay. You can say pass. You don't have I'll to. Just, I'll just say one of the <laughs> ladies is a, kind of a famous wrestler. Um, Shotzi. Yeah, there you go. I Shotzi's think that, in it. Yes, and okay. um, <laughs> I was just looking up a, names. A, a Braden. Damn, I hate it when I can't remember last names. But Braden is the young man. He is amazing. He's so good. So good. So, yeah, I'm excited about the people in it for sure. So there you go, Mark. There's something filming over in Daytona Beach. Drive your happy ass over there and see if you can be an extra. Look, you'll make it into a movie. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'll pass. It means I have to drive. <laughs> <laughs> and then in uh, Paradolia, which uh, is being filmed or it's already been filmed in UK, I did it online, but I am a midnight uh, disc jockey in that one. Paradolia. How does that name come about? What is that? Paradolia means that you see something that isn't really there. So like if you look at the clouds and you see an eagle or you look up and you see a window and just for a second you thought you saw somebody standing in it, but there's really nobody there when you look again. That's pareidolia. It's the idea of seeing something that's not real. What a fantastic name for a film. Yeah, it, it, and it's a perfect. It's the perfect name for this film. Okay. The one, that, the one that's got my attention is... Uh... Bury the Hatchet. Bury the Hatchet. Yes. Another excellent role. I ha They have shot some of it. They haven't uh, brought me out to California yet to do my role, but I, I am uh, the mother in that one of a very sick <laughs> son. Is his name Michael? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what, listen, it's like a full circle. You know what I'm saying? So it comes full circle, I think. So right. that's that's fantastic. Uh, I'm glad that you're able to to go in there and, and get back into the acting, because I'm sure if you didn't love it, it would be something you'd be like, ah, I'm done. You know, I'm, I'm over it. So, yeah, I'm definitely excited. I have some other roles uh, coming up that I'm pretty sure are going to be mine. And I'm getting a lot of nice roles, which is just uh amazing a lot of them have expanded the roles for me they started out kind of small and then they ended up uh, expanding them to give me bigger parts which has been really nice fantastic that is fantastic okay glick you're not funny i could just imagine what type of yeah no it's gonna be about the pyramids uh anyway <laughs> <laughs> we'll, oh, we'll, touch, we'll touch more on that next month uh so typically we ask our our guest here for an hour and you have been super gracious and you've given us an hour 
Uh, is there anything that you would like to talk about, discuss, uh, ask us? I mean, I, we're not interesting at all, so nobody ever. Well, really hold on, hold on, wait, wait, time out, Brian. There's one other thing that we do ask, or we do ask our guests if they wouldn't mind doing, and that's introducing our next guest uh, for next week's show, our uh -huh. leap show, our leap year show, what we're going to call it, or something like that. I don't know. Um, her name's Jamie Hill. She's a upcoming actress. I don't know if you've seen any of her. She's a she's a Canadian actress. Um, that's where mostly her movies are at right now. One of them's called a Skinamarink. Skinamarink. Yep. Yep. You still have not watched, but you need to. Is it that good? I'm not going to confirm or deny that accusation. <laughs> okay. Um, it's it's a horror. Um, psychiatrical horror. Yeah, I probably said that wrong. I bet you it, Sandy would watch it and be like, "Yeah, it's it's either really good or it's terrible." It, it's it's weird. I'll tell you this much: it's weird. It, but you got to have patience for it. Uh, but uh, Jamie Hill was supposed to be on our show not too long ago, but illness in the family, so we we rescheduled her for leap day, and I thought that was a perfect day for her. But we were, oh. just, we were just curious if you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, telling our viewers um, that she'll be on next week. Yeah, I can do that. You want to wait till I'm done yeah. or now? Yes. No, okay. no, no we're going to wait until you're done. We'll get to the very <laughs> end and we'll ask you. To, we'll, we'll pull us off the screen. We'll remind you who it is. We'll do the whole show. Yeah. Okay. I just want to say that, um, and I try and always say this, I love horror fans. I truly do. They have truly changed my life. They are so kind and good to me everywhere I go. I mean, they just, they're, they're just such a loving group of people. I am, I just, I just don't, I can't get over what a great group of people they are and how much I look forward to seeing them at conventions on Facebook. Uh, just, it, it's just an amazing group of people to me. And I just want them to know that I love them. And I'm grateful for every single one of them. And all the ones that reach out to me and follow me and come see me, I just so appreciate that. Perfect. And conventions, I love. When I did my first convention five years ago, I had no idea if I was going to like it or not. And after it was over, my agent said, well, you know, what do you, what did you think? Do you, do you want to do another one? And I said, hell yeah. <laughs> I, up. I had the best time. So that I was pretty much addicted from the first one. That was uh, age 40. And then of course I just did age 45 again, which marked five years. So conventions are the best, the sponsors, all of the fans. Um, and then also, of course, I have a website, which is unicorn sandyj.com uh unicorn comes from my agent's nickname for me he said i was a magical mystical creature that he thought he would never see <laughs> so i picked it up so i'm uh unicorn sandy j and on there i have you know regular collectibles they can send in things for me to sign i'll send them back they can buy photos of me and i'll sign them I have a couple things I've actually created myself. I have one of the Halloween knives and I do blood splatter and stuff on it and autograph it. <clears throat> I oh, have a no. Michael's mask that I splatter and sign. And uh, yeah, I'm going on yeah. that website after. Oh, I'm and the, I have Judas hairbrush. I have a hairbrush. Again, I splatter and sign it. So it's just kind of fun collectibles that you can only get, you know, from my website. Um, Plus, I list podcasts and upcoming films and all of that stuff on there as well. Awesome. Nice. So you are staying busy. Stop. So you can't, you don't have time to garden, man. You're, you're, you're way too busy for that. <laughs> Not right now. I am planning a small garden at the new house. So at some point, I'm going to be able to get back to this passion. <laughs> but uh, this it's probably not for a while. Gotcha. All right, so unicornsandyj.com is your website, and that's also going to be able to – that's going to link to your Facebook page. Is that right? That has a link to your Facebook? 
Yeah, it has links to Facebook and uh, Instagram. And Instagram, uh, okay. Facebook I, is the real Sandy Johnson. I just don't know how to use Instagram enough, so I'm not, I, 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 I have it on my phone. I'm like, I don't know. It's not like Facebook for some reason. I just can't figure it, it out. It is, uh, it is a little trickier than Facebook for sure. I prefer Facebook. It, it deals with videos and things, links better. Sure. I have my yep. Facebook link to my uh, Instagram. So whatever I put on Instagram or Facebook, it'll go over to Instagram automatically. Easy enough. Right. I, I got to figure that. I got to figure that part out. So. I can show you that part. Okay. <laughs> All it's right, like I so have to show you everything else. Whatever. <laughs> so let's see here. Uh, you want to tell your husband hello? Hey, Danny, baby, love you. I hope he watches <laughs> the show or at least gets a chance to watch it after. So what the um, hell? My wife doesn't even watch the show. I'd like to shout out to my agent too, Rick and Reed. Absolutely. He's the best. <laughs> We, so if I need an agent, I need to call who? Rick Enrique. Rick Enrique. Uh huh. It's Greek. We plan on leaving the show. It, I, <laughs> I, I, I'd like to. <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe dabble in some acting or something. Yeah, he actually only does conventions. I'm still. Never mind. For, I can't do that either. <laughs> yeah, I'm still looking for a uh, a theatrical. Theatrical. So, okay. Agent. I don't have that yet. So far, I'm still representing myself. I'm. There's tons of them out there, so we'll put the word out on our side too. So, yeah. All if right. uh, if, you ever go, is, if you ever come to, looking, a, so. yeah, I'm hoping that you come to one of the um, uh, horror cons down here. Um, I went to Spookilla a couple of, two years ago, and I got Nick Castle's autograph. And man, such a nice guy. I was there last year. I did not know. Oh, wait a minute. I could not uh I could not go to that one. And yes, he is a nice guy. All of the Halloween cast are super nice people. I'm still trying to like I said, I, you're just the start of you know trying to get Halloween people on here. I've been trying to get like uh Daniel Harris on here and um you know, even from the new how you know newer halloweens or rob zombie halloween stuff like that you know i i, I really would like to see more halloween we have to just here. be more interesting i think you're you're just terrible at this <laughs> you're not interesting at all mark <laughs> all right all right so she gave us a whole hour here over an hour mark you want to let yeah, this over young up. lady go oh I, you want to let her do her thing Yes, we'll let her do her thing, and then you know, she could stay for the outro because you know, I, I made I made a special one just for her, so she, okay. she can watch that, and then she can go if she wants. I won't keep her hostage any longer. Sandy, we're gonna pull us off the screen. Um, our upcoming guest next Thursday is Jamie Hill. That's it. There you go, Jamie Hill. Next Thursday, eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in, to okay. talking shit. Jamie Hill coming up next Thursday, 8 p.m. Jamie Hill. That's like Did I hear something. Nope. <laughs> 8 nope. p.m. We're gonna, Eastern Standard Time. That's right. fine. We're gonna pull us off the screen. We're gonna let you do that. Got it. Hey, next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be here for Jamie Hill. Perfect. 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 All right. Uh, you want to play the outro and let her watch that? Miss Miss Sandy, thank you so much. You've been thank absolutely you. amazing. Um, nice meeting you guys, and thank you for taking the time to make a nice intro. Thank you for being so humble and, and doing what you do, and uh, we will absolutely uh, check out. I'm really, I'm really ready to watch this movie, Executioner, now. So uh, it sounds like it's going to be really good. Uh, and then this other one, uh, Paradolia, uh, sounds fantastic as well. So definitely going to end up. Yeah, a that. lot of them, uh, a lot of them that are on there sound yep. really good and that she hasn't done yet. You know, they, you know, they already have her on there. So yep. you know, yeah, check them out as it is. Some good script coming up. Ready but, for it. Ready for it. All right. So Brian, would you like to send what us you out? What do you want me to do? 
Send us out. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you all for showing up tonight and enjoying Miss Sandy Johnson the way we did. Uh, from us here at Talking Shit, I'm Brian. I'm Mark. And we're That's Sandy. Here. Oh, yeah, that's Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Have a good night. Good night, y'all. <laughs>